Hello and welcome to my latest tutorial, The Apocalypse. As you have seen in the previous video, we will be creating a layout where we can completely destroy, including explosions, fire, smoke, so on and so forth. We will start this tutorial by simply creating a landscape using height fields which we will then fracture using our material fracture tools while caching it in, in between and we'll create some constraints and we will also create a proxy version that is animated as opposed to our high-res version and our in-between parts will be cached as well wait for this to load now and this will be simulated the, the part that just drops down as the land separates itself which will be fed into an RBD bullet solver we are doing all the uh, simulations in RBD bullet solver where we don't actually need uh, an FX license in a, in a studio environment um, we will learn how to move objects, animate the edges so they're st stuck to the, uh, uh, the separating pieces and then we'll cache this out. After that, some of you may already know, we will be using my um, procedural house generation tool. I just killed it. I think I can load a few from here. We use this technique in the um, Elite Fallen so now this is a new and improved it has better interiors and it's completely um, a fracture friendly we can simply generate futuristic city layouts that is completely destroyable some of these parts the parts you see blue are extruded upon fracture workflows so we randomly create a set of assets that has interior walls and columns and then we will move forward to I will put this on manual and then we'll go forward and start splitting our geometry um, using our predefined primitive groups floors, sidewalls, so on and so forth. And I'll show you how to efficiently fracture these, rename them necessarily uh, where needed. And finally, we'll cache this out um, in our building sim node. We will generate a, a, a fake layout that we load this in. So this is our height field. And I'm simply creating some boxes that is raid on the environment. And if I want, I can also limit the, uh, the render area to this. Uh, I'll switch this to uh, dark video, dark, dark background. So the center points to say, I want to focus my simulation area here, just in a little um, section. Then we end up with um, scatter objects that goes as uh, uh, on the outside, and then we get some simulation objects that are currently loaded as um, packed objects. But we can simply unpack them, which we have to, so we can iterate over. So this is now working through a wedge system, but I think we can simply say packed edit. Edit and I think I can just put that here. Display as full geo. We should load all the building models, hopefully without crashing. Let it cook a little bit more. Okay, back. So then we will end up passing this through our solver one at a time. Of course, we will prepare constraints first. 
per object shape and then we're going to pass this down with uh, we'll create constraints in between constraints from objects to objects define their masses so on and so forth we'll bring in our deformation object which is the, the the animated ground pass that as a guide and then again use rbd bullet solver for each building which then will end up something like this for each building right after that we will continue and then we'll catch this out and all this is happening let's put this back on manual and all this is happening through top network basically i can you, you, you should be able to just open this file from very scratch, like completely empty, brand new hard drive. A uh, little bit tweaking maybe because I use um, custom uh, cache paths, like um, which, which I'll show what I mean by that as well. Like I have a cache, then I have a RAID drive, which is called fast cache. So it's kind of like just resolving uh, to hard disk places so I don't have to write them by hand. And then basically you should be just able to right click Quick select it and then all this network will take you from terrain generation, house builds, you know, per wedge. It's gonna create a VDB for the uh, simulations required for the train. It's going to um, uh, create, uh, it will start doing simulations for the, the center part. It will fracture each of these buildings. And then once this set is complete, it will actually start simulating the buildings once that's done it will actually um, go each building start creating debris source then it will cache out these as volumes and particles pass it down to the simulations create the the, the pirate simulations like you see here um, and it will do the glass there's a little furniture not that visible but I, I think we could work on it more it's gonna create the pirate ground simulations and ground debris simulations and it's going to uh, we have a, um, a little tree layout that is going to be stuck on the uh, surface as well and um, that's gonna happen with a press of a button and basically if you if you're actually working in a studio environment that supports the PDG workflow this could go uh, a seriously um, a quick thing to do so you should be able to generate what I'm been trying to do on a studio environment pretty much overnight uh, with given given there are enough uh, machines and that's a tremendous advantage from, a, from an effects TD uh, perspective um, we are using um, the redshift to, to render the sequence um, however majority of these techniques can be applied we have a little test section that we will use so we don't wait like three days to see the results we can just chop off a little section from a building and say give me that simulation so we can visualize we can do flip books and um, once uh, our simulations are good and we'll be happy with the uh, flip books because the scene was getting really big so now we are going to have a separate render scene that where we uh, optimize for redshift views uh, with little uh, nice uh, images in the network view which is, is from i believe at the background of this control i this is moving sometimes let's stop that well that's that's um that's pretty much it and then we're going to create some cameras set up our render layers so i put like little uh, images here it kind of helps and then um we're going to split renders like building environment volume building volume generic atmosphere or server and um and that that will be it then that will uh, uh, conclude our tutorial the apocalypse and maybe a little bit of a um heat added as you saw at the end of the um video and i can't wait to um present this to you guys thank you for watching